It's built to support a sense of community. Well, for me, co-housing is when people are choosing to have community in their lives. What, it was the 70s, I guess, hey? In the early 70s in Denmark, some people were looking for a better way of living. I think they were looking for more community. Uh, sort of more efficient. Uh, they were starting to find that, you know, you're a stranger in your neighborhood, that type of thing. Immigrated to the U.S. and North America, Canada in the um, probably mostly 90s, 80s and 90s. Some people who went to school over there and studied co-housing came back to North America and decided that this was an excellent model for housing and community in North America. So they wrote a book about it and have become the gurus. <laughs> McCammett and Durrett wrote the book Co-Housing. They visited Denmark and they, they brought it to North America. involved for three years uh, before move-in, figuring out what the shape of the building was going to be, how many units were going to be in it, um, and down to the final design and so on. We designed one, two, three, and four bedroom houses. And each of the houses, especially this one, which is the two bedroom, was made to be expandable. Our units are not um, large um, on the scale um, which people, many people are accustomed to in our society today. We've built the two bedrooms with um, what we call attic trusses so that they can be broken up, in, you can get up into the attic trusses and uh, uh, add uh, one or even two bedrooms. And we've been very creative, some of us, about uh, expanding possible living spaces. So we have from what 680 uh, square feet yeah, all the way up to, to maybe 1,700 square feet yeah. for four-bedroom homes. We have stacked townhouses, we have just three-story townhouses that are ground to roof, and we have apartments that are, it's a four-level apartment building. Some of the homes, like mine, are um, all on one floor. At my stage of, of life, I didn't want to be looking at climbing a lot of stairs. I can now, but I may not be able to in 10 years from now. We've got a lot of quality built into this building that's beyond the surface, you know, sort of deep down, you know, the kind of stuff you care about, roofs that don't leak and, you know, all that kind of thing. Because we just made sure, you know, as we were designing it, that we were going to get something we could live with. They're south-facing, and they have... Um sloped roofs that are south facing so they'll take um, panels, solar panels for domestic hot water. And we also need to make the houses situated in such a way that we see our neighbors, that we can greet our neighbors as they go by and that it's easy to see people and get to people. It's really the heart of the community. The common house is a space that enables actual the community parts of co-housing. The theory being that you don't need as much extra space inside your unit because when you need more you go use the common house. Well, it's a very busy place. We have a wonderful kitchen which is big enough for half a dozen people to be preparing a meal in at one time. I think one of the best things about the common house is the opportunity for us to gather on special occasions, for us to have meals there at least two or three times a week. If I want to have a birthday party and I can't quite pull together the party and cleaning my whole house and hosting seven kids and their parents, that the common house just perf in a personal, beautiful, um, perfectly free way I can host a really great birthday party. It allows us to have all sorts of experiences and uh, interaction with, with each other that we wouldn't have, you know, if we didn't have that common space. We have the guest room. We have a meeting room where people can sort of meet in a more professional way with someone. And then there's the more homey environment of the common house. We have uh, performances, talent nights and so on. We have a stage. We have an in-house band. I've had uh, yoga teachers come and teach in the multipurpose room. We have uh, movie nights. It's where I've taken Pilates, yoga, and belly dancing. And the best thing is that on a rainy day, my kids are like out of control, but we can't go s somewhere because it's just a little bit too rainy. We can go in there and paint, do Play-Doh, turn somersaults, put some mats down, and it's just that little pressure valve. 
changes everything. I think one of the best things is when I, maybe on a cold winter night, have gone to get the ferry at 5.30, and I come back here and it's dark and it's cold and the lights are on in the common house and I can just run in there and put my $5 down and have a wonderful dinner with my neighbors. The real difference in co-housing is that it's a community. One of the most important things to me is that I know all these people here. Our attempt was to make it attractive to lots of different kinds of people. So we have single women, single men, some working, some not. Um, we have families of various, you know, some are stay-at-home moms and some are full-time working moms. I think that's extremely healthy for us to not have a monoculture like that. And just the interaction between the ages and between the um, different ethnic groups here as well. When I came here, it just felt like I came home, like I'd found my tribe. The mix is huge. Um, everything from some people are born here to um, I think the oldest person in this, this unit has been my mother who is 91. Yeah, I think that's another cool thing about co-housing is that there's people in sort of every age group here, all the way from infants to elders all, and everywhere in between, you can find here, which is cool. And I love the kids. Uh, I wouldn't have that much exposure to kids if I wasn't living here. And it was really important for me when, I, when, we, when my wife and I decided to move in here that there were enough kids to uh, provide a, that kind of atmosphere. And what I love about here is that Ethan or Alex or any of the kids or Amber can talk to anybody else just like a person. I've come to kind of appreciate in co-housing in particular, and in particular maybe the design of Winsong, but I think that's true for any co-housing complex I'm imagining, is we know our neighbors more than people living in single-family homes. I never lived in community in my life. I lived in a family where hardly anybody came there except my aunt. and I always knew I was looking for something else, but I had never experienced it. I think a lot of people feel that. They feel this kind of essential loneliness or separation, and, and I think this kind of a community can really help them. You know, different people have specialties in different areas. Some people are really great with computers. Some people are great at fixing cars. So we kind of have this pool of knowledge that we share with each other. We share a lot of things. Like if I would have been at another house that um, wasn't co-housing, I wouldn't have like a trampoline, a ton of kids to play with, a big playroom, all this other stuff. Living with people that I know and uh, socialize with to some extent. Now that doesn't mean that one's whole social life does or should take place within co-housing. That doesn't happen at all. Everybody has their own life and their own activities. Certainly, you know, some of the concerns were that if you live in a place like this on top of each other, you wouldn't have privacy. That's certainly not been my experience. We don't flush people out of their homes. If they want to hide for six months at a time, it's totally possible to do that. But if you wanted to interact, it's right outside your door. Our daughter's grown up here. She's, she was two when we came, and she's 14 now. So part of it for us, the impetus was, you know, to, to not, not be a lonely, isolated nuclear family where you have to drive your kid to somebody else's house to play with them, that sort of thing. And she's really grown up with an extended family here. If you want to play with your neighbor, instead of going to their backyard or, or your backyard, you could just play in the middle. So you can almost always find somebody out in the courtyard you can talk to or play with, depending on the age. I would say that we're an environmentally aware group of people and that we tried right from the construction stage to do whatever we could to make to do the right thing environmentally and sustainably. The other thing that's been really active here is car sharing. So Sean needs the car, he wants to go kayaking, I'm here with two kids, need to go shopping or whatever. It's really easy to share. We've then covenanted a very high percentage of open land, which we will not touch, but it has wildlife habitat value. And we have now one of the few remaining green spaces as Walnut Grove. We have these high efficiency boilers, but they are even more efficient because the water that comes into them is preheated by solar heat. 
Because we developed it for ourselves, we made decisions in the development process that increased the cost of construction, which a developer wouldn't normally do, but decreased the uh, consumption of energy once we moved in. And we have one woodworking shop for uh, 31 homes as opposed to 31 woodworking shops, and, right. and the list goes on. The biggest benefit is that if I want to be alone, I just can be alone. And if I want company, I just walk downstairs. Neither of us are, are extremely gregarious people, but whenever we really want to go and talk to somebody about something trifling or something serious, we people are there. I am exceptionally lucky because my daughter and son-in-law and two grandchildren live here. So that's a very special benefit for me. One thing that's great about it is that um, your friends live a hundred paces away. You can just go and visit your friends without having to make arrangements or anything and you don't have to drive over to your friend's place or even walk well, any considerable length of uh, t the time. You can just, they're right there. We find that the kids here um, do well. A lot of them go to the Langley Fine Arts School and they do well in speaking and performing because they're very used to being in community and you know often they're up on stage ever since they're two years old. When I first came to initial co-housing meetings I just had a sense that some of the people here were really up to something different and view the world differently than I did and I wanted to grow and I wanted to change because I, I think there were parts of my life that I went, wasn't too happy about but wasn't sure how to shift it. But I had a sense that if I hung out with these people doing this project together and living together, that I could start to figure out how to make my life shift. And I think I've seen other people here, they've developed businesses, a lot of it from support of, from other people because they get feedback again, right? And then you have translation of skills, um, skill sets that you don't have, business mindsets that you might not have, you get to talk to people. Um, so it's a lot of networking. It makes parenting easier, you know, babysitting is a non-issue and trying to find things your kid can do with other kids is if you have a certain mass of kids it's it's great it comes in handy in odd little ways too and that if, when there's retired people here for example there's always somebody here during the day children we've been told that uh, at the local fine arts school the children are mediators in conflicts on the in the playground i mean they're learning consensus here too and um, it's amazing with all the children we've got living here how well they play together I like being around people of like mind. I found that personally I've learnt a lot just from my neighbours that I wouldn't normally have the benefit of if I lived in a you know, traditional residential neighbourhood. The first benefit I would say is living with a, a wonderful group of people. And there are also deeper levels that you can enter into co-housing where you can have um, a much more meaningful relationships with people and actually have an intention of uh, working out conflicts and deepening the relationships. Research says that living in community is very good for physical health, mental health, community's health too. My grandchild lives here and I think it's a wonderful place for children, very safe, it's, you know it takes a village to raise a child is very much what goes on here. Well, we don't have an expectation that we're going to be taken care of by the community but at the same time there's there's a lot of willingness and, and energy for you yeah. know being there for each other. A lot of it just happens naturally. Yeah. So.